our day starts at 3 in the morning. We usually go out, gas up, and normally before sunrise, we are heading up to the land bank area to do our catch of the day. Their days start even before the sunrise. As workers at sea, fishermen slip into the darkness to begin another journey. To get the best catch of the day, you need an early start. Depending on what they plan to capture, time and gears change. Different species of fish have varying activity patterns. This is the daily routine of the vast majority of the fishers in the U.S. Virgin Islands, where commercial fishing is relatively small and artisanal. Fishers from St. Croix are not an exception. For her son, Nicky Martinez, a commercial fisherman, checking the traps released the day before is the first attempt to get his daily catch. Then we go and we do a variety of fishing. If we see traps, and, uh, if you have to pull traps that day, we pull no more than 20 traps. Then we do two or three dives according to what we already have in the boat, what already has been catch. St. Croix is more of a dive fishery. They, they, a lot of their landings come from diving. They would go out on a daily basis, they can dive conch, they can do spare fishing, they can catch lobster. They have a very small trap fishery here in St. Croix compared to St. Thomas. St. Thomas, St. John is more of a trap fishery. So here in St. Croix, even if you're eight miles away from St. Croix in the east end, you have um, areas up to 43 feet of water. So since we have a lot of shallow areas, a lot of fishermen move into that and it's a way of fishing where you leave five o'clock in the morning and by 12 you're back home. But before getting home, the fresh catch is delivered according to the demand order for that day. We have two vendors that buy our fish from us for wholesale price. So when we get back every day, um, my son and my brother leave in a different truck to deliver the lobsters and myself, I come straight to the market and we have people that we sell our catch to wholesale. Local fresh fish markets are set up in two main spots across St. Croix. Open daily from 11 to 1 o'clock, they are the perfect place to buy the catch of the day. Consumers prefer plate-sized fish, and parrot fish is the main staple food. We have probably 15 fishermen that come here every single day from Monday to Saturday. We sell local reef fish, we sell lobster. When the season for the conch is open, we also sell conch here. It's been here for about, I would say, six, seven years in this particular spot. And it started out with me and my grandpa, Jesus, and a friend of us named Melo Martinez. And we started out here and it just, we had a good clientele, like a lot of people know us for fish. So the most species I get is the spiny lobster, the pirate fish, trigger fish, and the variety of snappers and groupers. So, and not like the big groupers, like I'm talking about the Heinz, the Coneys, those species, those are the ones I do every day. And every day I sell them out. I do good. Marketing is very good on the island. Locals love the fish. Fishermen in St. Croix won't harvest more than they believe they can sell. Most of their produce is sold before they come to shore. Everything I catch, I sell. I don't catch nothing that I can't sell. Fishing techniques and instruments have varied over the years. Currently, most of the commercial fishers are divers. Nevertheless, gill nets, lines, hooks, and traps figure among the fishing arts used in St. Croix. Fishers build their own traps or pots using different kinds of materials. The chicken wire is still used. The chicken wire is still used in most of the Caribbean. But I, I use this because it's more available, that's availability. There are also simpler fishing gears, such as lines and hooks. When I started catching the, the octopuses from a guy from Vieques, he taught me how to catch them. Um, love it, I love it. I've been doing it since 12, I love it, you know. I use a hook to catch the octopus, I use this. This is what you use to get them out of the hood. I have this hook for about four years now. There are fishing arts that are art themselves. 
sewing nets, and building traps require a lot of time, practice, and creativity. As with many other Caribbean islands, St. Croix has a tourism-based economy that is strongly bound to benefits provided by the marine resources, including commercial and recreational fishing. The largest of the U.S. Virgin Islands is 28 miles long and 7 miles wide. Its Danish ancestry is reflected in Christiansted on the east with its harbored side boardwalk. Point Udall, showcasing a sundial known as the Millennium Monument, is the easternmost point of the United States, including territories. Frederickstead on the west side stands out for its calm seas and a naturally deep port. With a population of about 50,000 permanent residents, St. Croix has a long fishing tradition that results from the encounter of different cultures. Overall, the fishing industry here in the Virgin Islands, it's really culturally rooted and economically, we are always committed to ensuring that it continues to be a vibrant part of um, our economy. We, the last assessment that the department was, was able to, to produce showed that the Virgin Islands fishery, it contributes to the, the economy approximately seven to $10 million annually. We know that fishers, they are able to provide hotels and restaurants with daily catch and we know that the catch is able to not only feed Virgin Islanders but the tourists that come here on a daily basis. And as we speak about fishers, we don't want to forget also our recreational fishers in the territory. Again, it's how I believe individuals become commercial fishers. In the Virgin Islands, I think the, the annual consumption is 27 pounds per person, while in other places it's only like seven or eight pounds per person when it comes to eating fish. We, we don't export any of our, of our fish. All our fish is consumed locally. So whatever fishermen we have on St. Croix doing commercial fishing, they sell all their fish locally to the consumers, which ends up being well over 800,000 pounds a year of all species put together. When you look at the food chain, my look for the fisherman, that he's a public servant. Because when you look at the, the, the food chain, and especially here in the Caribbean, the importance of seafood on, on so many diets, that I look at a fisherman as a devoted person. In order to protect the resource, fishing activities are regulated at the local and federal level as well. The Department of Planning and Natural Resources has jurisdiction in the local waters, and the Caribbean Fishery Management Council has jurisdiction in the Economic Exclusive Zone. Established by the Magnuson-Stevens Act in 1976, it is one of eight regional councils for the conservation and management of U.S. Caribbean fish stocks. Our role is to prepare a management plan for the U.S. Caribbean that includes Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And we do that by preparing management plans that encompass the science, the socioeconomy, the biology, the habitat of the area. And then looking at the information that we get from the fishers, the scientists, the council then decide the best strategy to manage those fisheries. Closed seasons, annual catch limits, quotas and fishery management plans are part of the mechanisms used by the governmental agencies to protect the fish stocks, allowing them to reproduce and ensuring that there will be fish for future generations. Well, we have seasonal closures, which I am pro-regulation um, because it helps promote the, the fish to spawn and um, procreate. We have been seeing over the years the snapper um, close area, the queen conch five month closure, it has been working. We see how the lobster, the conch and all those, those species have been procreating in abundance. We, are, we have a lot of abundance in conch, we have a lot of abundance in lobster here in this island. So we want to make sure that the fishery itself remains healthy and that people can provide the fish that are needed by local communities. We want to keep the, you know, the, the fishermen, uh, 
in a situation where they're making reasonable profits, but at the same time, they're not taking so many fish that it jeopardizes the, the fish stock's ability to replenish itself for the future. We want this to go on for a long time. Considering that each island's fisheries have particular characteristics, the Council is working on island-based management plans. So the rules are being set for the island-based um, areas which affects only that island, which is, I think, we fought hard over the last five to ten years to get this accomplished. Because before, everything was based on one. So, in other words, if a fishery was shut down in Puerto Rico, it was also shut down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, if there's an overrun on an ACL in Puerto Rico, it only affects Puerto Rico. If there's an overrun in St. Croix, it only affects St. Croix, and the same for St. Thomas, St. John also. Fishers are a key asset for science and management. Since they are the ones that are every day at sea, they are able to provide valuable information and contributions for the protection and sustainable use of marine resources. I represent the fishermen of St. Croix through the FAC, which is the Fishery Advisory Committee. And I am, I'm also a district advisory panel um, member. But with the council itself, I go to some of the meetings if the council realize that I have any questions or any support that I can give into whatever regulations they are doing, they call upon me to go to these council meetings to represent that, that questions or to represent whoever, whatever um, questions my fishermen have. The 2017 hurricane season caused devastation to several U.S. states and territories. Irma and Maria were major hurricanes that caused significant damage to Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. After both hurricanes hit the territory, the fishery basically came to a standstill because most of the fishers, they, they lost their gear, whether it was their fishing vessels, um, a lot of um, fishers, they do fish trap and they lost most of their fish traps to, to the hurricane. So a lot of the fishers, um, they had to do other things to supplement uh, their fishing. Our immediate response was to now reach out to the recreational and the commercial fishers in the territory to see what damage they had suffered and what we could do to help them um, rebuild their, their livelihood. In coming up with a numeric value or monetary value to the damages that the Virgin Islands had suffered. What the division did was it spearheaded these post-hurricane assessments on the commercial fishers and the vessels for hire and fishery-related businesses in the territory. And as a result of that, the Virgin Islands, we have been able to receive from the federal government $10 million in funding. Large areas of the island suffered significant infrastructure damage. St. Croix fishing communities were seriously affected, but are now open for business. It did some, some effect to the ocean. It really messed up a lot of my areas where I do real good, nice catch. Some of the cave them are covered with sand, some break away, but the, the, the fishes and the lobsters, just, they just keep coming and finding shelter wherever they can. And, and it's still healthy ground. After Hurricane Maria, we have been having a success with sales. A lot of locals have been helping us out and buying the local fresh fish. So after Maria, we have been getting rid of all our catches. Even though the hurricanes may come, and for our part, we think it damages the reef. On the other end of nature, it maybe was necessary to do the cleaning from the pollution that maybe we have created sometimes. So it's a cleaning process. So the reef do comes back. Crucian fishermen are in a path to recovery, working with the Caribbean Fishery Management Council to ease the impact of future natural events. Immediately after the hurricane, the governor normally implements a curfew and the fishermen had issues with that because they cannot go out of their house for like 12 hours a day, so they could not go out and fish. Because there's no power, there was, there was hoping to bring back fresh fish for the, for the people of the Virgin Islands that were needing of, of fresh food. They were just not given the opportunity without a curfew pass. But we're gonna be looking at that 
and trying to work with the government to issue the fishermen curfew passes to be able to go out and, and feed the, the people. St. Croix stands as a meeting point for the old generations of fishers, the present ones and those to come. Fishermen and agencies are working together towards sustainability to ensure the health of the ecosystem and guarantee thriving fisheries for the socio-economy of the island. As Tom Daly wisely said, Our culture tells us that you, you paddle your own canoe. You paddle your own canoe.